Hi, welcome to Discovery Briefs, where we provide concise educational videos about legal technology and e-discovery. As an e-discovery consultant, I get to help lawyers adopt AI and machine learning to find their most relevant data. In my experience, while many are interested, still relatively few lawyers use the technology. In our machine learning videos, we'll bring some clarity to topics that are preventing lawyers from jumping in. For example, you might ask yourself, if I'm using machine learning, such as Technology Assistant Review, or TAR, how can I know that the system is even working properly? In this video, we'll discuss three key metrics that can give you a better picture of how the machine application is working. These are metrics that are becoming more common in legal search. These metrics are prevalence, recall, and precision. Now keep in mind, these concepts are not limited to TAR. These three numbers can apply to any sort of classification, even to keyword search and human review. Now in legal search, we're usually dealing with documents, so we'll discuss these three numbers in that context. First, we'll start with prevalence. In a legal search, whether through manual review or TAR, you're trying to classify documents as either responsive or not responsive. Prevalence tells us how many responsive documents are in a given population. For example, if you have a population of 100 documents, if 30 of those documents are actually responsive, you have a prevalence of 30%. Next, let's talk about recall. Recall answers this question. Out of all the responsive or relevant documents in a population, how many are you actually finding? A confusion matrix shows us the relationship between the actual responsiveness of a document and what the machine predicts that value to be. On the left-hand side of the matrix, you have two values, the true responsive and the true not responsive. On top, we have the machine predicted responsive and not responsive values. So let's look at an example to understand recall in the confusion matrix. We take one of the 100 documents we saw before. For this document, let's assume that it's a true responsive document. And next, let's also assume that the machine predicted that document to be responsive as well since both the human reviewer and the machine coded the document as responsive, we will call this a true positive. And that goes into the true positive quadrant. Here, out of our 100 documents, we said before that there were 30 responsive documents. And for demonstration, we'll assume that the machine correctly predicted 25 out of the 30 documents. In other words, we have 25 true positives. Now, let's look at another document. And this document has a true value of responsive, but the machine predicted that the document is not responsive. We call this a false negative. Let's say that there are five of those in the 100. We will put five in the false negative quadrant of the confusion matrix. So we now have the components for our recall measure. We have 30 total actual responsive documents, but the machine only found 25 of those. So recall, is 25 divided by 30, or 83.3%. So in this example, our machine has found 83.3% of all responsive documents. For this example, let's look at another document. This document has a true value of not responsive. However, the machine predicted this document as responsive. This is a false positive. Let's say there are 10 false positives. We will fill out 10 in the false positive quadrant. Just to complete the matrix, we now have 40 out of the 100 documents already accounted for. So we know that there are 60 documents in the true negatives quadrant. To get precision, you take the true positives and divide the number by the true positives plus false positives. So here, that is 25 over 35, or 71.4%. This measure is important because in legal search, documents predicted as responsive through TAR might undergo some sort of manual attorney review. Thus, a low precision score can result in a high number of false positives being reviewed, and that can be costly. So that's prevalence, recall, and precision. With these measures, you can begin to understand how a machine learning system might be performing. In later videos, we'll dive deeper into these concepts and apply them to real-world scenarios. Now, before we end, if you found this video to be helpful, please share it. If you have questions about legal technology, e-discovery, or just have a topic for your next video, please send me a note on LinkedIn or Twitter. Thanks.